Hi and welcome to Kiln IQ with me Henko. This video is a condensed version of the basics of drying presentation that forms part of our on-site training program, an appetizer so to speak. I'll be breaking it up into two pieces. In part one I'll be covering EMC and in part two the factors affecting moisture movement in kiln drying. The purpose is not to replace the scientific explanations in wood science and drying manuals but to convey the info in a simple explanation so that normal people can understand and apply it. Wood is a hygroscopic material, meaning it will absorb or give up moisture to equalize its own moisture content with a persistent ambient moisture content in the air. This is referred to as equilibrium moisture content or EMC. Shown is a map of the USA. If we want to leave a piece of wood outside, exposed to natural airflow, but not to direct sunlight or precipitation, the wood will eventually equalize to that area's EMC. In New York State, this will be about 13%, and in the Nevada desert, about 6%. The final use of timber determines to what moisture content it should be dry to. Heating air increases the air's ability to carry moisture. This decreases the EMC value of the same air. Think about how the air dries out one's eyes and sinuses inside a house with the central heating turned up too high in the winter months. This is the reason why most hardwoods are dried down to well below 10% because most of it inevitably ends up indoors and will shrink and move while drying from 12 plus percent moisture content down to 6 or 8 once it's installed. This because the EMC indoors is lower than outside due to the indoor heating systems. As long as an organism is alive and hydrated enough, it has a limited ability to control moisture loss to the atmosphere at just the right rate. Take the mammalian respiratory system for instance, when exposed to the EMC in the desert or the EMC in a rainforest. Under extremely low EMC conditions, the inner surface of the lungs will release just enough moisture into the air it breathes to prevent it from drying out and cracking. Under higher EMC conditions, the loss of moisture through the process of breathing is a lot less. Although a wood cell is entirely different, try to grasp the concept of giving up just enough moisture not to rupture. It is the key to drying timber correctly. To utilize timber we must kill the tree. Then we cut and dice it from a protected ground to nice and square with the beautiful timber exposed. With that, all the tree's mechanisms to control its own moisture movement is destroyed. The exposed wood cell's moisture content will now follow the EMC of the surrounding air and will rupture if moisture is moved away too rapidly. The point is, drying out is not a normal living process for wood and has to be controlled through precise drying practice. To summarize, I've covered what EMC is, its importance in the final use of timber and how important it is to control EMC when we dry timber. Be sure to join me for part 2 of the basics of drying, that is the factors affecting moisture movement in drying. Till next time, saw straight and dry flat.